Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on anger modulation. For today, my discussion will be break into three different parts. Firstly, I'm going to discuss the difference between narrow band and wide band frequency modulation. In short, I'm going to determine when this is called a narrow band FM or wide band FM. So this is the first objective that I want to meet for this video. Next, I'm going to discuss about pre-emphasis and de-emphasis. Basically, pre-emphasis happened in the transmitter, while de-emphasis actually happened in the receiver. I'm also going to discuss what is the purpose of having this pre-emphasis and de-emphasis. Lastly, I'd like to do a quick conclusion based on amplitude modulation versus frequency modulation. In this, basically you will be able to conclude or do a very quick comparison the advantages and disadvantages of AM and FM. This will be the part 6 series discussion on frequency modulation. The earlier on series discussion, I have put the video link under the description. So please go through the video if you're keen to know more about frequency modulation. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, sincere thanks from me. Let's quickly differentiate what is narrow band and wide band FM. Let's start by discuss on narrow band FM. When the modulation index is less than 0 0.2, we will have a form of FM called narrow band FM. Okay, so basically, when the modulation index is less than 0 0.2, we can call this as narrow band FM. The narrow band FM can be approximate using this cousin rule. Okay, so this is basically the equation to calculate bandwidth using cousin rule. So next step here, basically what I want to do is I want to take a common factor of FM, which is the frequency of the modulating signal. So I want to take this FM out as a common factor. So this part here will be the maximum deviation frequency divided by FM, this will be become 1, as you can see from here. You can see here? So basically, I take the FM. So basically, this peak frequency deviation divided by FM, which is the frequency of the modulating signal. So this become 1. And this part here, okay, you can see over here, I can actually rewrite them as MF, which is the modulation index here. You can see here, this can be a MF, which is the modulation index which I rewrite over here. For this narrow band case, okay, remember, okay, this modulation index is less than 0 0.2. And hence, I actually can omit away this modulation index, which means that bandwidth is equal to 2 FM, which is illustrated here. Okay, so this is approximate the same bandwidth as full AM, double side band full carrier. Okay, remember, for double side band full carrier, the bandwidth is equal to 2 FM. Okay, so basically, with this form under the narrow band FM, the bandwidth is also exactly or maybe close to the bandwidth of amplitude modulation. Normally, the maximum allowed modulating frequency is 3 kHz. Okay, because of the low frequency, typically it only used for voice communication. For example, narrow band FM is used in police aircraft, taxi, voice communication system. Okay, so this is what is on narrow band FM. Next, on wide band FM, for this case here, for wide band, the modulation index is definitely greater than 0 0.2. Okay, the bandwidth will be greater than 2 FM okay, because this MF become a larger number. If you look at this equation, if this become a larger number, Potentially, my bandwidth will be more than 2 FM. Can you see here? So if this becomes a significant number, okay, therefore, I can conclude that my bandwidth is actually wider. So therefore, it is called a wide band FM here. Okay. 
Wideband FM is used in radio FM broadcast for high clear signal. Okay, the maximum allowable modulating signal is actually 15 kilohertz. Okay, this number is much, much bigger as compared to narrowband FM. Next, I'm going to explain the difference between pre-emphasis and de-emphasis. The amplitude spectrum of voice, okay, typically okay, we have amplitude is higher at lower frequency and lower, okay, which means that the amplitude is lower at higher frequency. Okay, which means that at low frequency, we can have a very loud, so for example, uh, uh, amplitude, we can have a pretty loud amplitude. But for higher frequency, typically we have some challenge because we typically has a lower amplitude at high frequency. And because of this, okay, the signal to noise ratio for FM signal in general, they are higher at lower modulating frequency. Okay, remember, for example, at lower modulating frequency, okay, for example, for singer, okay, it is much more easier to sing in a lower frequency. Imagine for those high frequency singer, they are actually much more well paid because it's much more difficult to project out their voice at a higher frequency. And this is actually what it means over here. So for example, for low frequency, the amplitude can be much more easier to be higher but for high frequency, it will be a big challenge to have a high amplitude. And because of this, typically for higher frequency, it will have a lower amplitude as compared to the low frequency. And because of this scenario, the signal to noise ratio for FM signal is typically they are higher at lower modulating frequency and lower at higher modulating frequency, okay, which means that for FM signal, the signal is much more stronger as compared to the noise. So therefore, at low frequency, we have a higher SNR as compared to higher modulating frequency. Remember, for a higher modulating frequency, typically it's much more challenging to have a high signal strength. And therefore, because of this, the signal to noise ratio at high modulating frequency is typically lower. Okay, let's take a look on this diagram here. Okay, for example, this is how much that you actually want to amplify. Okay, can you imagine how much I actually want to amplify? For example, I told you that at low frequency, I don't really require to amplify my voice at all. Typically, at low frequency, I don't want to do any amplification. However, as what I discussed earlier on, when at higher frequency, typically it will be more challenged okay, to have a high amplitude signal. And therefore, at high frequency, I actually want to boost up my signal. And you can see from here, the higher the frequency, the more I actually provide the amplification. So for this case here, this is what we call a pre-emphasis curve. This is mainly happen in the transmitter, as I mentioned earlier on. As for de-emphasis, it's actually the reverse process of pre-emphasis. This thing actually also happen at the receiver. Remember I told you, because we want to recover back the original signal, whatever that we amplify at the pre-emphasis, I actually need to remove away the effect at the de-emphasis. Like what I mentioned earlier on, at higher frequency, I actually boost up the signal greater. So therefore, at the receiver, at the higher frequency, I also need to take away more in terms of the signal strength as compared to the low frequency. So this is the difference between pre-emphasis and de-emphasis. I still have one more slide okay, to describe about pre-emphasis and de-emphasis. Like what I mentioned earlier on, pre-emphasis mainly happen at transmitter on the voice before it is FM modulated. The okay, amplitude at higher frequency are given a greater boost compared to the lower frequency to improve transmit signal. Okay, so basically for this case here, for a transmitter, Okay, the higher frequency, they are given much bigger boost as compared to the low, lower frequency. The lower frequency, I probably will not want to provide any, any form of gain. The de-emphasis, like I explained earlier on, basically is doing the reverse process of pre-emphasis. And because of this, this de-emphasis actually happened at receiver. A reverse process to restore the higher frequency component back to their original amplitude and reduce the noise. 
So now I guess you have a better idea what is pre-emphasis and de-emphasis. Next, I'm going to do a very quick comparison between amplitude modulation versus frequency modulation. Okay, let's start off by the first one, okay, which is the amplitude modulation. Okay, for amplitude modulation, the amplitude of the modulated carrier change according to modulating signal, okay, which means that the modulated signal, the amplitude of the modulated signal actually change according to the amplitude of the modulating signal. The frequency of the modulated carrier remain at a modulated carrier frequency, which means that for amplitude modulation, the frequency for the modulated signal basically remain the same as the unmodulated carrier frequency. As for frequency modulation, the amplitude of the modulated carrier remain at unmodulated carrier amplitude, which means that for this case here, for FM, the amplitude remain the same as unmodulated carrier amplitude. So therefore, you don't expect any changes of amplitude for frequency modulation. However, the frequency of the modulated carrier actually changed according to the amplitude of the modulating signal. So this is the difference between amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. For AM amplitude modulation, the amplitude changed according to the amplitude of the modulating signal. For frequency modulation, the frequency of the modulated signal actually changed according to the amplitude of the modulating signal. Next, let's talk about power. Okay, for AM, okay, we have different set of transmit power. Okay, the total transmit power is not a constant. Remember, there are three scenarios, and in fact, I have three cases of transmit power. Depend whether is it double side band full carrier, double side band suppressed carrier, or single side band suppressed carrier. And basically, it also depends on this modulation index, as you can see from here. Okay, so this is the total power for amplitude modulation. As for frequency modulation, the transmit power is exactly the same as the power of the carrier, which is governed by this equation. Next, for amplitude modulation, it has a low power efficient, okay, which means that it consumes much more power as compared to frequency modulation. For frequency modulation, I have a better power efficient, okay, which means that the power is much more well utilized as compared to amplitude modulation. Next, for amplitude modulation, okay, it may be very sensitive to noise. But for frequency modulation, remember okay, the noise couple basically fall on the amplitude. And because frequency modulation depends on the frequency and hence the noise will not be added into the signal. So therefore, for this case here, we have a high signal clarity and fidelity. For amplitude modulation, it has a smaller bandwidth. And for am amplitude modulation, okay, the bandwidth is simply two times the frequency of the modulating signal. However, for frequency modulation, I need a larger bandwidth as FM can have many significant sideband. Remember, it's basically depend on the Purcell function table. And because of this, I potentially require a larger bandwidth to send a signal that is frequency modulated. Okay, so this is the disadvantage of frequency modulation. I need a higher bandwidth to carry the data. Next, for AM modulation or demodulation circuit is actually require very low complexity. As for FM modulation and demodulation circuit, I actually has a higher complexity. Okay, so basically this hopefully give you some idea when you're going to use AM or FM. So with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please stop to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks. See you guys.